Russia continues to target populated areas in Taz Governorate. Right. Head of Presidential Leadership Council concludes visit to the United Arab Emirates. Murid Bank warns that Yemen is one of the most water scarce countries in the world. Welcome to Yemen Today TV. This is the English News with me, Roshan Fouad. Despite regional and international peace efforts, the health has continued to commit violations against civilians and target populated areas in Taz. What adds to the suffering of civilians is the blockade that has been imposed on the city since 2016. The following report has more details. The people of Taiz live in a state of constant anxiety and fear under ruthless Houthi terrorism for the ninth year in a row, while the international community is silent toward these violations and breaches. The Houthi militia has exacerbated its violations on the ground in Taiz in a way that confirms its lack of seriousness in dealing with peace efforts. To say that the Houthi rebels will turn to peace is nothing but fancy, and we cannot count on it. We should look at realities on the ground. Houthis belong to Iran, and Iran should be cautioned to cut its Houthi arms in Yemen, or the battle will continue between the Arab nations and Iran. The Houthis do not believe in the political process, the international agreements, or human rights. They even are closer to war than they are to peace, with the barrels of their guns directed to the innocent people, day and night, killing and injuring people who has nothing to do with fighting. There are peace efforts made to reach a political process in Yemen. During these endeavors, the Houthi militia is moving their positions to lay down mines and conduct sniper operations. Sniper operations are a daily Houthi practice in different places, especially in the northern part of Taiz. There are human rights reports on this issue. The most heinous violation by the militia, however, is the continuation of their blockade on the city. Because the Houthi militia lives only in blood, it sees the unannounced humanitarian truce since the beginning of last October as nothing but an appropriate declaration to commit more violations against civilians in Taiz, where the Human Rights Information and Training Center documented nearly 282 violations, including killing, injuries, arrest, displacement, and looting of properties during the period from January to March this year. The International Rescue Committee called on the European Union to play a leading role in financing the humanitarian response in Yemen. The committee stressed that the European Union should play a pioneering role in supporting Yemen by financing the humanitarian response and encouraging donors to bridge the existing gaps with flexible multi-year funding. Head of the Presidential Council, Rashad Al Alimi, concluded visit to the United Arab Emirates. Al Alimi discussed with Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed, President of the UAE, bilateral relations and developments in Yemen. He expressed appreciation to the UAE for courageous stances on the side of the Yemeni people and their political leadership. For his part, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed affirmed that the UAE stands by the Yemeni people in their aspirations for peace, stability, and prosperity. قبل كان ما فيش دعم يعني ما فيش إقبال كثير على المستوصف والله الدعم نقل المركز نقلة غير عادية المشروع هذا دعم المركز بكادر جديد إما دنحنا بكثير من الأجهزة والمعدات الطبية والأثاث وفروا لنا كثير من الأدوية الأساسية خاصة مع الأدوية هذه تقدم المريض مجانا المشروع قدم للمركز ميزانية شغلية ما كنا نعلم بها ما 
طبعا نحن راضيين خدمة يقدمونها كمية الخدمة ما شاء الله يقدمونها ما قصروا جزاهم الله خير Four children were injured by a mine explosion in the Mekhad district in Taiz Garden Raid. Masan Project said that four children had injuries of varying degrees due to the explosion. The project added that the four children found a landmine in Mekhad Desert and took it to a junk store in the city to sell it, but upon arrival it exploded causing them serious injuries. The World Bank warned that Yemen faces severe water crisis. Such a crisis made it hard for people to have access to a clear drinking water. This report gives more details. Yemen is currently suffering from the lack of water resources. The World Bank indicated that about 18 million people in the country require clean drinking water. According to the International Committee of the Red Cross, less than 30 percent of Yemen's population is served by the country's water network. This puts most of the country in responsibility for obtaining and sanitizing their water. Women and children often travel long distances in order to obtain water from a stream outside the village they live in. This process takes long hours and must be done almost every day. Most of the time, children stop going to school in order to help their families collect water. In addition, families have also moved away from cities to be closer to their water sources. In 2016, Yemen witnessed a devastating cholera outbreak, which has plagued the country in the next years. About 2.5 million cases were documented, and over 4,000 people died. As stated by the World Health Organization, Yemen accounted for 93% of the world's cholera cases in 2019. Also, UNICEF reported that in August 2022, there were about 556 suspected cholera cases. The bacteria that causes cholera is still present in Yemen's drinking water, which is a worry for the disease's future, according to the NASA Earth Observatory. Without stronger water sanitation infrastructure, the nation might have epidemics every year. The unclean water negatively impacts the health of Yemenis, specifically their teeth and bones. The high fluoride levels in the nation's water supply can lead to fluorosis, a tooth discoloration. It's important to remember that fixing the water situation will necessitate long-term efforts and commitment from all stakeholders. Wilson Center announced that Yemen has the worst internet service in the world. There have been efforts made by some international companies to fix this issue starting from Adan. The following report has more details. Yemen has the worst internet access in the world. In 2023, Starlink Company agreed on a preliminary contract to provide satellite internet in Aden. Initial results were remarkable, but there is a long way before a full license is reached. In addition to having the worst humanitarian crisis of the century, Yemen also has one of the worst and most expensive internet services in the world. As of early 2023, there were around 20 million active cellular mobile connections. If each person had only one account, this would mean that around 58% of the population is connected. However, the disconnected population is likely much higher given that many Yemenis have more than one account. Furthermore, the internet connection provided by mobile companies is expensive and unreliable. In May 2023, Yemen had the slowest mobile network internet in the world, according to Speed Test Global Index for Mobile Networks. Seven points slower than Syria and ten points slower than Libya, two war zones in the region, and 91 points slower than Saudi Arabia next door. This is sadly the case due to the lack of infrastructure, such as fiber optic cables connecting Yemen internally and to undersea cables globally. Connectivity for most of the country currently comes through the aging Falcon cable, which was installed in 2006, when it was temporarily damaged on January 2020 after being caught by a ship's anchor in Egypt. There was a nationwide outage for weeks until it was repaired. There was another outage in August 2020, and it was damaged in Hodeida in July 2018 by the Houthis while digging fortifications. Moreover, the monopoly over the internet by mobile companies makes prices extremely high, especially compared to the quality of the service. The deal, however, is not final, and there are many risks ahead. There is a long way to go from introducing the service as a pilot in one city in a few government-based locations to having it readily available for any citizen who can afford it nationwide. Coming next.
The Italian Arab Association in Rome celebrates human culture and civilization. Welcome back. Yemeni students have won first place in the 14th Arab Championship for Robotics and Artificial Intelligence in the Arab world, which was recently held in Qatar. More on the story is within the following report. The conflict and its consequences have not dampened Yemeni's resolve, as the country's young are expanding its profile in the most prominent Arab and worldwide forums specializing in artificial intelligence and robotics. Despite the conflict and its circumstances, a group of Yemeni students have become Arab heroes after taking first place in the Arab Championship for Robotics and Artificial Intelligence this year. We participated in the 14th Robotics Championship in Qatar and won the first place. The trip was very difficult as a result of the lack of the financial support as we travelled by car from Yemen to Oman. The spirit was good when we arrived to Qatar and I dedicate this victory to all Yemenis. Yemen topped the list of 15 Arab countries participating in the tournament, outperforming more than 200 Arab teams, thanks to those students who were sponsored by specialized educational institutions and schools that provided them with reasons for success and an environment for creativity. <laughs> We as businessmen honor these young people to continue their education and creativity. Our goal is to comfort their parents so that they know we support their children. The country will be developed by the youth who have different ideas to run businesses in the future as we have a problem in the Arab world in management. In fact, Adan Gate Foundation has made great efforts to support creative students from modest families, and this was because of businessmen and members of the Board of Trustees who contribute voluntarily to develop the education process. Having an interest since elementary school and accepting skills early on adds to the development of a generation of innovators, which is what those schools focused on, and establish initiatives for future inventors among their peers. The International Organization for Migration announced the displacement of 30 Yemeni families during the third week of May. In its weekly report on displacement, the organization said that it had monitored the displacement of 30 Yemeni families during the period from May 14 to May 20. The organization indicated that the majority of the displays that moved to the governorates of Taiz, Ma'rib and Hodeida. A number of Yemenis stranded in Sudan called upon the government to quickly arrange the return to home. 
The Yemeni staged a protest in front of the Yemeni embassy in Port Sudan and accused the government of ignoring and neglecting their demands. The World Health Organization said it has established more than 300 nutrition surveillance sites in Yemen. According to the organization, the aim of these centers is to identify acute malnutrition among children. The organization tweeted that it has established 314 nutrition surveillance sites throughout Yemen as part of the Human Capital Project funded by the World Bank. The Italian Arab Friendship Association in Rome celebrated the Yemeni culture. More on this is in the following report. A meeting between the Italian Arab Association and the Ambassador of the Republic of Yemen, whose main theme was the millennial history of Yemeni civilization, followed by the delivery of a plaque in recognition of the Ambassador's commitment to the diplomatic, cultural and humanitarian fields. The greeting of the National Deputy Secretary of Welcome Association Italy was followed by the intervention of a journalist who introduced the speech of the guest of honor and highlighted the events at the dawn of Yemen culture, famous among other things for the refined quality of ensigns, which is used since ancient times to sanitize environments and to treat various pathologies with recognized anti-inflammatory properties. In ancient times, it was a natural product in great demand, which allowed many populations who settled in the southernmost part of the Arabian Peninsula to get in touch with other civilizations and organize trade and resources with a considerable mutual cultural enrichment. Yemeni land was the site of the oldest civilizations in the world when the Semites settled the region in the third millennium before the so-called Common Era. A series of kingdoms then flourished, notably occupying the valley of Bayhan, mentioned in the Bible and the Quran, led by Bilqis, the legendary queen of Saba. Among the oldest buildings, the Ma'rib Dam should be mentioned as one of the engineering marvels of the ancient world. The Romans called these lands Arabia Flix, but the attempt to conquer them failed miserably. In the third century, the Himyaris unified the country, but persecutions also began, including that against Christians. In 630, Islam spread and took hold in this region, which would characterize the history. However, after regaining full freedom, Yemen has struggled to find lasting peace. The events of recent years are ending in a positive way, given that a process of reconciliation is underway between the various forces that make up the country. Here is a reminder of the main headlines. Healthy militia continues to target populated areas and ties golfing rate. Head of Presidential Leadership Council concludes visit to the United Arab Emirates. World Bank warns that Yemen is one of the most water scarce countries in the world. This is the end of the news. It was Rushen Foe. Thank you for watching.